faith. Those of you who are able to still stand, we would like for you to turn in your bulletin to page five, and we sing our morning hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Think about the words of the song and see how blessed we are.
Our Father, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts and gratitude in our minds. Lord, we come to thank you for all of your many, manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come out to the house of prayer on Sunday morning to give you the glory and the honor. And Lord, we thank you for our families that uh, have uh, uh, woken up this morning with you on their mind and turned out to the house of prayer. We realize that prayer is the key to the kingdom and then faith unlocks the door. I thank you, Lord, that I'm, I'm in the church and then the church is in me. And I got up this morning to bring my church to church, to fellowship with my brothers and sisters one more time. In the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen.
We thank God for our youth, young, uh, young adults. The Bible says, remember now thy creed and days of thy youth. Don't wait until old age come on. God wants to use some of their youth, vim, and vitality while you're young. We thank God for them. I have the greatest pleasure of presenting our pastor, new pastor to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Praise God. Nearly 28 years ago, I was blessed to present the previous pastor, Reverend Bottom, to this church. And here the Lord has blessed me to be around nearly 28 years later to present our new pastor, Reverend Aaron Letcher. Sometimes we say, what's in a name? Letcher. In our English vocabulary, uh, there is a, a lecturer, uh, L-E-C-T-U-R-E, -E, and he spelled his name L-E-T-C-H-E-R-E. A lecturer in our English vocabulary is someone who is a keynote speaker at an event. Reverend Lecture. He has the same responsibility to be the keynote speaker to the church. When I think about the responsibility of a pastor, I'd like to go back in, in the uh, 20th chapter of Acts and the 28th verse, when the Apostle Paul was on his way to Jerusalem for the last time. And as he didn't have time to go to Ephesus, and he sent word ahead to the leaders of the churches in Ephesus to meet him at Malita. And the pastors of the churches in Ephesus, in Ephesus met him there. And he gave them many instruction from the Lord as being a successful pastor. But in the 28th verse, he says that you take heed of yourself, take care of yourself, and the house of God, the church, which the Lord have made you overseer. Then he tells them, uh, as the shepherd of the churches in, uh, in uh, uh, Ephesus, you feed the flocks, which God have purchased with his own blood. You feed them. Feeding the flock in God's sight means to shepherd. And the shepherd means to uh, teach and lead. But I want the church to know that this is a family affair. Notice he gave him the instruction to feed, to take care of them. But you ever heard the expression, sheep get sheep, and the shepherd feed? This is a family affair. So don't expect him to be the one who would bring the sheep in. That's our job. Hmm? But he tells them, told us to the, uh, the, 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 the shepherds, you feed. And he didn't mean feed junk food. You feed them with the word of God. And whenever God's sheep is being fed. They never get to the place where they say, I've heard enough of the word. They always say that I want more. And the word of God will not make you physically fat. You get me? It will not give you the big head, but it sure will make you humble. So we're saying to Reverend Litcher, our pastor, you feed. 
we gonna bring the sheep in. We are so happy. Before uh, Pastor Lydia take his uh, position as the pastor, we'd like to introduce uh, uh, his grandfather, I believe he said, from the Global Missionary Baptist Church, Memphis, Tennessee, as well as the assistant pastor, uh, Reverend uh, Colin Peston, the assistant pastor. Then we'd like to introduce the pastor's wife and family. Wife, first lady of the church, and uh, understand there are three children. God bless you. We would like to recognize those who are here from the Global Missionary Baptist Church, also in Tennessee. We thank you for coming. And now, we're going to present to you our pastor, Reverend Aaron, Aaron Lisher, as he brings us the word of God. make me get happy too fast this is the day that the Lord hath made let us rejoice and be glad in it brothers and sisters I'm so excited to be with you today I'm so excited We've had a long distance relationship since August or April the 16th. And my mind has been on you and as we work through the intricacies of ministry and to God be the glory, amen. Let's give God the glory. We bless God for each of you and, and we certainly give homage to all of the pastors who have served before me. I stand on the shoulders of great preachers. 
We bless God for Reverend Bonner who has served over 27 years. And I pray, I pray that I can be a good shepherd as he was. Amen. We bless God for all of you. Amen. You all have just been awesome to me in our transition to St. Louis. Amen. We bless God for each uh, of these ministers and preachers here. We, got, we bless God for uh, Reverend Armstrong, amen, who has held down the fort. Amen. And he has uh, been one, and I share with you brothers and sisters, you try the Spirit by the Spirit. And we thank God for someone as genuine as a Herman Armstrong. We bless God for uh, James Carter. Amen. We thank God for James Carter. Amen. We thank God for uh, Reverend uh, Davis. Uh, thank God. Reverend Davis. We thank God for Amen. Cedric Harden. Amen. Amen. We thank God for uh, Charles Willis. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for all of the ministers and Kenneth Davis. Amen. And Leonard Harris. Amen. We bless God for all of you. Amen. Amen. And we bless God for those of you ha who have uh, been very accommodating to us. Amen. Uh, Lewis Gray, amen. Y'all give your chairman. There's a lot of weight that rests on his shoulders. We thank God for him, and we thank God also for Jeanette. Uh, we thank God for her, amen. She has been a blessing. Thank God for her and the trustee board. And we bless God for the official staff, amen. Just give them a hand. I know this perhaps maybe a few minutes, maybe about four minutes longer than your regular service, but if you all would just bear with me, I think that we're on our way to a great destination. Amen? Amen. 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 We bless God for uh, Lewis Gray, and we thank God for uh, our sister Jeanette, who's blessed us and, and accommodating us, and the official staff of the trustees and the deacons. I also want to look in on my family, amen. It was because they allowed me to come to St. Louis. They cried, they begged me not to go. But I heard the voice of God. But they acquiesced to the voice of God. First of all, I, I like to recognize my wife. Amen. My beautiful wife, Sister Petrina Letcher. Petrina, stand. I don't want nobody to get confused and think you single. Amen. That's... That's, that's first... Like, look, the sun starts shining when you bless you we got we bless you we bless you that's my wife and i have my only three children that's by my wife is right here today amen i got only three and they all by her amen amen i got zion amen wave zion amen amen i got princeton he's probably out playing oh he's okay princeton wave your hand man there we go. And then I got Avery in the front seat, and she sleep. Amen. <laughs> Let her stay asleep. Let her stay asleep. Don't wake up. Amen. We glad to have her. Uh, I have uh, my mother here and my sisters. My mother is right there. God bless you. That's my mother. She's, she made sure that I got through school and she made sure that I did what I was supposed to do. We thank God for my mother and my sisters. Got my mother-in-law here as well. We thank God for her. I know y'all probably looking at me and say, is he gonna talk about the whole family? I ain't gonna do y'all like that. 
But what I want to do, what, what I do want to do is recognize my grandmother and my grandfather. Amen. Amen. I want to recognize them. Amen. Amen. I, I bless God for my grandmother and my grandfather. Uh, and brothers and sisters, uh, a lot of my family came to see me. Family, just wave your hand if you came from Memphis. Amen. If you came from Memphis, wave your hand. Bless God for you. Thank you. Amen. I, I bless God for you. Also, what surprised me is the Glasper Holmes Heaston clan that's already up here. So I want to tell y'all St. Louis, amen. I got some family already up here. And we straight, amen. Amen. I, I didn't got so excited. Let me get back to my word, amen. Amen. Uh, brothers, I just feel like I'm part of the family already. Let's give God a little bit of praise. Amen. With that being said, I ask that you would go with me. Amen. And if I didn't call your name, that does not mean I forgot you. But we have to work for the preservation of time. Amen. I love you and I'm glad you're here. Global Baptist Church, thank God for you, amen? Thank God for you, thank God for you. We want to look at Philippians. Philippians. Give that young adult choir a hand, amen? Amen, amen. Philippians. Three, amen, amen, amen. Praise God for those of you who like to stand in reverence to the word of God, amen. I was just trying to watch. Philippians 3. 13 and 14 reads on this wise says brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And brothers and sisters, I'd like to use as a framework for the time that we share together pressing with purpose as pastor and people. Is that all right? Pressing with purpose as pastor and people. Sunday, October the 20th, 1968, Tanzanian athlete John Stephen Akwari set out in Mexico City on the men's marathon race of 1968 Summer Olympics. Along the way, while competing in the race, Due to high aptitudes, his body began to experience spasmodic contractions and they began to cramp severely. After which, my brothers and sisters, the record is that he had a violent fall. He fell with such great force that he wounded his knee, dislocated his patella joint, 
He injured his collarbone because he struck hard against uh, the scorching pavement. What a painful and agonizing fall. Nevertheless, the story reports that with a wounded collarbone and with a bloody and dislocated knee, Mr. John Stephen Akwari continued in the race. I'm trying to talk to someone here today. You might have fallen and scarred your knee up. You might have hit your collarbone. You might have gotten to a place where you are injured, but I want to encourage you today. Tell your neighbor to stay in. Stay in the race. My brothers and sisters, Stephen Akwari continued in the race. And brothers and sisters, he continued in the race because he understood that he had a purpose to fulfill. And I want you to understand today that in your life, whatever capacity that you serve in the church, that you have a purpose to fulfill. So I want to ask you and I want to advise you, I want to counsel with you today to stay in the race. Brothers and sisters, what I share with you is that God has something for us and what bless me is that John Stephen Aquari, even when advised by his health counselors, they say you ought to pull out the race because your knee is dislocated, your patella bone is fractured, but you ought to pull out of the race. But what he shared, brothers and sisters, he said that my country did not send me 10,000 miles to start the race, but what they did, they sent me here to finish the course. I wish I had some help in here. Brothers and sisters, what the Lord is trying to tell you is that you, God has invested too much in you for you to simply start the race, but God wants you to finish the course. And brothers and sisters, uh, I share with you this, that God has invested too much in you and God has invested too much in the church and God has invested too much in this church. And as I look at the history, it starts pre-Civil War 150 years ago. God invested in this church, but I share with you brothers and sisters that God has invested too much in this church for you to quit the journey right now. I want to counsel to you, there are a lot of fallen churches with collapsed ministries because they did not stand in God's purpose. And I want to caution you that we ought to walk in God's purpose. We ought to stand in what God has done and is doing for us. I've often heard, never get in a race just to be running. And I want to caution you today, don't get in the race just to be running. But get in the race with a reason and a purpose to win. As a matter of fact, I'm so glad I can call on a spiritual witness in the person of Barack Obama. He voiced the same and similar sentiments in 2008 when Hillary Clinton suggested that he would be a formidable second winner. She said that he'll be a great vice president. But I'm so glad when I tuned in to NBC, he said, well, brothers and sisters, I'm not running for vice president, but I'm running 
for the President of the United States of America. All I'm saying to you, the brothers and sisters, you've got to set a particular mark, you've got to set a goal, and his purpose was set, and brothers and sisters, he was running the race to reach the mark and achieve his goal. Brothers and sisters, life, uh, it, life it, is so precious, we can't just run to be running. But we've got to understand our purpose. For if you begin the race without a divine direction or an eternal aspiration, uh, those who start like that, and if they start without understanding their purpose, they are less likely to finish the course. Nevertheless, Paul talks to us. Pleasant Green, are we in the house? Paul is talking uh, to us in first century Palestine. He's talking to 21st century Pleasant Green. And I just believe what he's sharing with us brothers and sisters is that you've got to set some standards and you've got to set your course. You've got to trust God that God is leading you to purpose. This then sets me at the hermeneutical doorsteps of our text because there are some things you need to know in order to finish your course. In the ancient world, the mark was a goal of an Olympic runner who would press their physical limits to achieve. In this context, in the first uh, or in the finish line, the context, the finish line of the race, the athlete would uninterruptedly focus his attention toward his desired mark. My brothers and sisters, I beseech you that when you make clear your mark, when you distinguish your divine destiny, when you fix your eyes upon the mark, when you know what God has for you, somebody sings the song that what God has for me, it is for me. Brothers and sisters, when God places in your front view what the Lord wants you to do, you ought to stay fixed upon it, you ought to stay on it, and you ought to keep going what the old and the seasoned saint says that I woke up this morning am I moving too fast today I woke up this morning and my mind was stayed stayed every morning I suggest to you as a band of baptized believers every morning that you wake up your mind ought to stay affixed on Jesus every morning that you wake up you ought to get down on your knees and tell the Lord thank you because it wasn't because I was so good Lord thank you it was not because I was so right Lord thank you I trust you So what I want to share with you, I just got a couple points to make and I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all got a pick a dilly here? Y'all ain't got a pick a dilly, but that's all right. But I eating some good places here. What I'm sharing with you is, first thing I want to share with you is that Paul says, I press toward the mark. But what I want you to understand, the first point that I want you to understand, Kelvin, is pressing is painful. I want to tell you this, that the deeper that you submerge with the Savior, the more painful and piercing your pressing uh, and pressures become. In other words, brothers and sisters, the, the deeper you become with Jesus Christ, the more you start reading his word, the more you come to Bible study, the more you start shouting in front of folks that's unbelievers, the more pressure. You got 
have to understand that there are some pressures that will come. But don't be dismayed, don't be disturbed, don't be discouraged because while the deeper you submerge with the Savior, not only the more painful and pressing it becomes, the more powerful and purposeful your existence becomes. Y'all, come on, y'all, y'all gonna pray with me? Can I put a little south in your mouth? You ought to praise God because God has done something in your life. You ought to praise God because God has brought you through. You ought to praise God because God has reached way down and lifted you. That's enough. I'm back in St. Louis now. You've got to understand that your pressing becomes powerful. What I share with you is, they say, no pain, no gain. Well, I know y'all don't like Dorothy, right? So let me go to whining. She says, no cross. <laughs> Where my believers at? No cross. No crown. You've got to get to a place in your life where you are down on your knees and understand that there's no cross. No crown. I'm almost out of here. Brothers and sisters, let me pause parenthetically to tell you that as a baptized band of believers, it is possible for us that we are persecuted even on our way to our purpose. Do you know that? It is possible for you and I to be persecuted even on our way to God's purpose. You all don't believe me? Let me go through my spiritual Rolodex. I'm so glad that I am pointed to the disciples. They were on their way to their purpose. You all remember they were walking with the Lord, don't you? Lord called them away from where they were. But even when they got on the boat, a storm began to arise. I, I wish I had just a few more witnesses here. The Lord, ah, oh, my brothers and sisters said, You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some storms. But you have to understand that you will be persecuted even on your way to purpose. I got another witness. Joseph was abandoned, beaten, and lied on on his way uh, uh, to a walk with God. If you look at David, David, while he was on his way to the throne, he was ridiculed and laughed at on his way to fight Goliath. Nehemiah was conspired against while he was rebuilding the wall. I wish I had the Holy Ghost in here. Jeremiah, he cried uh, on his way, on his way to the pulpit. And I don't know, I don't know about you, but I've done my sense of crying on the way to do God's will. Lord, uh, I'm reminded uh, of Dr. Martin Luther King uh, on his way, oh Lord, uh, to, to the balcony. He was stabbed, uh, but he still did God's word. I'm out of here now. But I got one more point that I want to share with you. That prize winning 
you ought to press you ought to press on because God has put it in your destiny and you ought to understand that pressing it involves a little perseverance is there anybody here know that pressing it involves a little perseverance when I look back at the Apostle Paul he knew he knew all he knew that this was a marathon race in other words he knew that this race that was set before us it was no short race Paul knew that you have to stay on the course even though storms rise and winds blow you got to keep on running oh, I'm out of here now but I want to tell you woo, you got to keep on you got to keep on running oh, you got to be faithful even to the end of your road I'm so glad the word of God calls on Paul Paul says oh, you ought to run this race yeah you ought to run this race that the Lord sets before you you ought to run with patience being that that there is encamped around us so great a cloud of witnesses you want to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets you and you ought to run with patience the race that the Lord set before you in other words Lord what I'm trying to tell you is whatever happens in your life you ought to keep on you ought to keep on running the Bible says you ought to keep on running because the prize is paramount the prize is paramount because Jesus Christ he shed his blood he died on Calvary's cross he died on Calvary's cross he died on Calvary's cross he died he shed his blood is there anybody here know that the Lord he shed his blood and because the Lord because he lives I'm able to face tomorrow because he lives is there anybody here know that because he lives your infirmity becomes a recovery because he lives oh lord the sick are become healed because he lives oh lord oh lord because he lives I can face I can face tomorrow ain't God alright ah, ain't he alright ah, do you know do you know do you know do you know Jesus he died but early early I'm sorry I can't stay I can't stay behind the pulpit but he died but early 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 he got up with 
has all power. If you know he's got all power, you ought to wave your hand. If he's ever visited you in your sick room, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you, sir. He's all right. I'm gonna keep running all the days of my life. Is there anybody running? I'm gonna keep running because God has been good to me. I know the Lord has been good to me. Is there anybody here that He's been good to you? I just want to shout and tell the Lord thank you. He's a mighty good God. The doors of the church are open. You ought to open up the door. The door is open. Somebody said it like this. I'm running for my life running cause I wanna see Christ I've made up in my mind I'm gonna run while I steal have time I'm gonna run oh Ooh. I gotta run let me say this hallelujah hallelujah any other I wanna run Listen. When these eyes of mine close and the blood in my veins is cold, when I step out of Hallelujah. We thank God for who God is. Let's give God a great big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.